Hello and welcome to Taya Talk. I am David Strickle, creator of the Taya Mindset Practice, which is the practical application of the stream's teachings. And the stream is my channeling of source. I think I made that sound very simple, didn't I? <laughs> so what I want to talk about today is my comprehension of source versus ego in ourselves and universally from what I have been taught by the stream and what I share in their teachings. So the title of this video is Defying Logic because the, the universal process of creation absolutely defies logic all the time. But we have this, this polarized environment that we're operating in, in physical. You see a non-physical, non-physical energy is pure positive energy. Non-physical energy, the energetic realm as we like to call it, we, I refer to that as source. You may refer to that as God. I do believe that that energy is the source of all creation, all creation. And it is a creative energy. It is a right brain energy, if you will. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is a powerful force of new creation. But if you think about how incredibly powerful that force of creation is, because it creates the entire universe, it's pure positive. It's only well-being. It's only what we define as humans is love. The reason that we define it as love is that because we in physical come to a physical environment that is impacted by polarity, meaning that there is a, a counter energy to that pure positive that creates sort of this drag on it. And the purpose of this drag is to create what we may want to call contrast or conflict or unwanted circumstances and events that actually inspires intentional new creation. Because if there isn't intentional new creation, then there is no expansion of consciousness, meaning there's no expansion of the universe. So in order for the universe to thrive, it's, it's ever expanding. And even scientists are now saying that our universe is ever expanding. And you may wonder, well, gosh, what is it expanding into? You know, what's on the other side of the universe that it's expanding into? Well, what's on the other side of the universe is nothing but what, what I would call more universe. It's all the same thing. The expansion is not a physical expansion. The expansion is an expansion in sophistication. And yes, in that becoming a more sophisticated version of itself, new physical environments are formed, but that consciousness that is source is eternal. So in that consciousness, there is no linear time. There is no back then and now, and there's new creation. There is nothing like that. There is, there is, <clears throat> there is, Sorry, I have some background noise going on, making sure everything's okay in the house. So in this expansion of consciousness, there is no linear time. Consciousness is simply expanding in sophistication, becoming a, a wiser, more intelligent version of itself. And that is achieved by consciousness expressing itself into physical environments and in these physical environments of contrast or of polarity, you have these situations where unwanted circumstances and events present themselves, things that we believe we can improve upon. That creates our expansion for us. And we have things that go sideways in our lives. We have things that go sideways in our world. We have this, this inspiration now that launches a new desire that causes us to want something new. So we have these two sides of our, of our mind. We have the, the left brain and the right brain. The left brain is the logical side and the right brain is the creative side. Obviously, none of us are exactly the same. Some of us are more left. Some of us are more right. Some people are considered more creative. Some people are definitely considered more analytical and logical. That creates a balance in the physical world, which actually keeps the universe in balance. Because if we didn't have that lack of source energy, that separation from source, we would want for nothing because source again is pure positive. It's appreciation of all that is all creation. There is nothing occurring 
in the earth environment or any physical environment. We're focused here on earth because this is our planet. This is what our firsthand knowledge is all about. So the unwanted circumstances and events on earth are simply a product of separation from source energy. Yes, religions label it evil, <coughs> demonic. There's an evil force. But if you think about it, the only evil is born of, of ego. And really, the only evil in the world is more human ego. Because if we can separate ourselves from the animals and look at the animal world, and most of us can make sense that, okay, the natural order of things in the animal kingdom is there's a food chain and they don't tend to hunt and kill each other for sport as much as they hunt and kill each other for territory and food and mates and things like that and we can make we can make sense of all that like okay this is how that world works but humanity being a mutation of planet earth we are more intelligent and more creative we're able to project uh, more creative thought into the future and that a more creative ability also causes us to dwell more in the past. We don't simply learn from our past uh, encounters and move forward. We tend to linger there a lot. So that intelligence, actually, it separates us from the animals for sure. And it makes us interesting, unique beings on Earth because we're not just here responding to our environment. We are, we are creating on a more active level than simply responding to the now and evolving with the conditions of the planet the way our animals do. Animals just evolve and kind of adapt to what's going on. And certainly some of them, uh, the new forms of life uh, and species or form, old forms and species die off. That's just the natural order of things also. <clears throat> but we humans, we create well beyond that, well beyond just evolution, certainly. I mean, look at all the things that we have created for ourselves because we have discerned a preference out of the wilderness, mostly. We've discerned a preference for shelter. We've discerned a preference for convenience. We've discerned a preference for communication. We've discerned a preference for travel and, and all of these things. And look at all of the things that we've created due to those preferences. So we have these preferences because we want to expand and we want more, but we also have problems that come through our lives that we want to solve. And the solving of them, very often we get really stuck in that 3D left brain logical energy, which is the opposite of source energy. It's not demonic. It's not evil. The evil things, the things that we label awful and evil, look at the things that happen in the world for real, the things that really happen, people taking advantage of one another, people harming one another, abusing one another, wars, all of these things that we look at and say, gosh, you know, we shouldn't be doing that to each other. Most of us think that. Most of the, those things are all rooted in some type of fear. Fear is the root of all of that. And fear is not source. Fear is the opposite of source. So really what we label evil and demonic energy and things like that, that's just that fear rooted separation from source. That is our ego. It's very ego driven because we believe and we actually make peace in our minds with the concept of harming other people because we believe usually that we're going to be harmed if we don't harm first. If we don't somehow take advantage, we're going to be taken advantage of. And that ego thinks that way. The ego wants us to physically survive and physically move forward. And the ego serves the purpose of survival of the fittest. That is the way of the world. And we see now that in our benevolence, we are creating all of this technology that sort of falsely props up people that have lots of allergies, people that uh, aren't necessarily strong enough to really go out and make it in the real world, quote unquote. And there is a kindness at the core of that, but also stream, the stream has said that we are weakening humanity by allowing that to happen, by allowing the, the weakest to be protected, we're actually weakening uh, all of humanity, which is really an interesting concept. We could do a whole other Taya talk just on that. But what I want to come back around to is the fact that if we start thinking of this, this duality in all things, because it, it's present everywhere. I do a lot of thinking about duality. Uh, polarity is a huge part of the Taya practice. All of you that practice it know that. This duality and the, this polarity is what creates the tension that drives all new creation and thus drives all expansion. And so we have the logical side, which is our ego side, 
which when we get down in uh, below neutral in our vibration, that really kicks in. That we have this new desire that seems so ridiculous and unreasonable. And when we're up our spiral, it doesn't seem that way. When we're up our spiral and that source energy, we dream big. We, we can have it all. We can have this and do that and be this other thing and solve this problem. And we really, really allow ourselves to dream big when we're up there. What happens inevitably is we revisit those dreams at a lower vibration in a, in a future time. And when we revisit those dreams, we wipe all of that stuff out because the logic kicks in. Well, how in the hell is that going to work? How is that going to happen? How is, how is that going to come into play? That's never worked for me before. That won't change that quickly. That's going to take a long time. You know, all of these things that we tell ourselves, that is all ego-driven, below-neutral thought. When we start getting overly logical, the more logical we get, the more we fall right back in line. I better go get a job. I better work for somebody else. I better pay all my bills. I better save my money. I've got to pay my taxes. If I don't do these things, I'm going to be in trouble. There's going to be some negative consequence. You know, I've, I've got to do this. That's get it done mode. It's not necessarily the bottom of your spiral, but it's get it done mode. It's logical. Uh, there is a lot of benefit to some in society by having a large population of, of human beings operating a little below neutral around negative five. We call that space compliancy. And I think compliancy is what most human beings are suffering from at this time. Most human beings, most of humanity, if I had to pick a, a, a vibration that described humanity as an average, it would be negative five compliancy. You've got to do this. You've got to get a job. You've got to work. You've got to uh, provide for yourself. You've got to have health insurance. You've got to you know, do all of these things or these, all these awful things are going to happen. And then we come across these, these kooks sometimes, these spiritual kooks that just defy all that. And sometimes we come across people who aren't spiritual kooks who have a belief system that defies logic. Really famous people, really wealthy and successful people, uh, the people that really get out and innovate and create in our world. They are the ones that we don't call them kooks because they're successful. You know, a kook with money is a genius, right? <laughs> so the, we have geniuses and we have kooks. They are all people who defy logic because they operate above neutral. They allow magic to happen. They allow themselves to defy logic. They amass wealth and fame and create things. And it's not necessarily just the uber wealthy. I know people that, that don't have money flowing at all, but still live a joyous, abundant existence. And when that happens, they are defying logic. When, when the money and the, the things they need and the shelter and the food and the joyous day after joyous day flow in and they're not even working, I know people like this in my circle very well who just live magically day after day after day after day. They answer to no one. They stress for nothing. They have their needs met. They live in joy. They're not necessarily on a yacht somewhere. They're not living a, a complex life, but they're happy people. They are joyful people. And we have been so programmed to think that the only value is in being rich and famous. That if we're not that, then you're a kook. How can you be happy living there that way? And you're, you know, you're so chill you're so joyful every day. You're just loving nature and loving simple things. That's not good enough, though. You know, you need to have yachts and mansions and a fleet of cars and tons of people following you and worshiping you. That's all ego. All of that is ego. There's nothing wrong with wanting to experience those things. But when you believe that the only happiness is there, you really have bought into the matrix. Because the matrix is saying the 1% is the place to be. They're at the top of the financial pyramid and everyone else is in support of that 1%. And in the matrix, that's true. In the matrix, human beings are currency. In the matrix, the people, the top one percenters see humanity not as something that you need to be uh, taken care of, but something that really needs to be taken care of you. We need poor people. We need uneducated people. We need people in prison. Think about it. There is a mindset of that. We need to pass laws, lock more people up, because if people are terrified of this group of, of people, they are going to divert their tax dollars to locking more of them up. So let's lock more of them up. Let's have privatized prisons. Let's have more people that are living in fear, that are uneducated, that don't believe in themselves. 
let's have more people operating below neutral in that negative five vibration. That's the matrix. That's what the matrix has created for humanity. And we're operating in that right now. And there's signs of that everywhere. Anything that you look at, religion, politics, all of those things support that idea of having this compliant society. And most of, of society is operating in that compliancy space where they are providing some sort of commerce for the top. And that's true. That is the matrix. But you don't have to operate in the matrix. You can defy logic and move yourself out of the matrix and not participate in any of those things if you don't want to. That's one of my favorite sayings when I'm speaking about my life as a human being in relation to the matrix is I'm going to choose not to participate in that. I'm not going to participate in recessions. I'm not going to participate in a corporate structure. I'm not going to participate in worrying about who is winning elections in politics. I'm not going to give it much power. I pay attention. I think when you're really in a good place about where you are in relation to the matrix, you can dabble in the matrix. You can pay attention to it and see what's going on because you're not judging it. Therefore, you're not fearing it. That's the key. Because a lot of people get into this, this um, spiritual awakening stuff. And, and we've all talked about having a spiritual awakening. And I know exactly what that experience feels like. And you, you feel like you're really waking up to what, what the universe is really all about, which is way beyond what 3D humanity slash the matrix is all about. <clears throat> and it feels amazing when you first discover and start thinking about how creation actually occurs, which is really what we're talking about here. And then, of course, spirituality is a big tent. So there's all these human created notions that I believe are just human created notions around spirituality. They're tools that we create for ourselves. Um, you know, all of these ideas about chakras and angels and spirit guides and all that stuff. All that stuff it has the power that we give to it. So if it's real for you, then it's real for you. But understanding that the, the crux of really being out of the matrix is understanding that belief systems create reality. So your belief system is creating your reality. So if you believe in the chakra system and you believe in, you know, whatever spiritual practice you're into and you're giving it power for you, that is very real. But that doesn't mean that it's real for everyone. Uh, Christians probably believe, even devout true Christians probably believe that Christianity is, is the only way. I know that I was taught that when I was a child. This is it. Everyone else is going to go to hell if you don't believe the way that we do. And that for them is very, very real. So when you really get out of the matrix, you're able to see that very clearly, that we have all of these belief systems. None of them are right. None of them are wrong. They're all serving a purpose of expansion. They're all delivering some contrast for sure in this polarized environment. You're actually getting yourself a little above polarity at that point, which is nice. It doesn't mean you're not going to get drawn back into it because you will. But being able to view the matrix from outside of it and fully comprehend it without judgment allows you to not have to hide from things. You don't have to run and hide from the news and politics and what's going on in 3D if you're not truly letting that impact you. If it's still impacting you and you're a place in your journey where that still tugs at you a bit, it may be beneficial to separate yourself from that for a while. Turn off media, turn off the news, turn off the television, get off social media, meditate more, go inward more because the truth is inside. All of this that I share from the stream is, is from inside. And that's something that, that my intention in sharing the stream remains to this day to be very powerful, that when I channel the stream, I get my ego out of the way as much as possible and allow source to speak through me in human terms that other people can comprehend. I don't want any religious uh, beliefs or any fear of going too deep or any fear of offending anybody or anything like that. I've never wanted that to filter what the stream is sharing. And that's why the stream will share things sometimes that aren't necessarily popular or politically correct because they are sharing universal truth outside the matrix and universal truth to people that have lived in the matrix, which most of us have most of our lives. Some of that stuff can be very off putting if you're brand new to the teachings. So getting back to, to defying logic, yes, source, absolutely can defy logic. We can defy logic. We can operate our lives in such a way that we define logic. I have defied logic all my life. I have lived in, in a way that I wasn't supposed to be able to live and done things that I wasn't supposed to be able to do. 
uh, I've made that a way of life. I've, I've always, even through contrast and through downturns and through, you know, all of the things that are judged harshly in 3D, come back around to having love of myself and love and appreciation of all that is. And when you've got that going you and you make that your new default vibration, the arriving at the clarity of source is just so much easier. So that's why we develop the four pillars of the Taya practice. Those four things that we do in Taya, allowing more source, more meditation, more appreciation of all that is, more love of ourselves, that is source. So when we're in that space, we're allowing more source into our being. It's always in us. It's not something that leaves us and comes back when we align with it. It really is in us all the time, waiting to be realized by us, knowing where we are energetically all the time. That, that goes hand in hand with the source uh, part of it. But sometimes it's easier to know where you are vibrationally in the moment because we're not always as aligned with source. We, we, are, we are fluid. So we are moving up and down this virtual vibrational spiral all the time. And yes, when we go down, we start to move more into our ego and more away from our source being in, in terms of how we're operating in that moment. And that creates the contrasts of our lives. And ultimately, the contrasts of our lives are our own creation from which to, to create new things. So we create a storm that comes through our lives. And when we're in the midst of the storm, sometimes we're what we call spun out. We're down in that lower vibrational field. We're judging. We shouldn't be down here. We shouldn't be experiencing this. Uh, I shouldn't be broke. I shouldn't be overweight. I shouldn't be getting older. I shouldn't be alone. I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be that. All these, these judgments that we do. That's all ego. That's not source. Source loves us exactly the way that we are, exactly how we're experiencing it, because there's nothing wrong with any human experience. It's all here to expand our consciousness eternally. Every setback, every downturn, every judgment, every storm that comes through, all of us, our own creation, to give us something new to want for. I want to uh, improve myself, or maybe I don't want to improve myself. I want to just enjoy being and allow myself to appreciate being something different than what the matrix tells me I'm supposed to be. I, I've had a huge experience with that, with putting weight back on over the co past couple of years. I started really judging that. And then I got to see clearly that when I thought I was so dialed in, when I wrote that first book, I thought I was so dialed in. I had manifested every single thing everyone wants to manifest. Uh, you know, the love life was in check. The finances were in check. Uh, you know, I was in the best shape of my life. I was attractive. You know, I was all these things that the matrix told me I was supposed to be. And then some of that stuff started unraveling. And when it started unraveling in my initial reaction was kind of like, oh shit, you know, some of these things aren't going the way they're supposed to be going right now. What's wrong with me? You know, why am I creating this? I know I'm creating it. I'm far enough into my practice to know that this is my creation, but why am I doing this? Well, the why is because there was still judgment attached to all of that stuff. My ego was still intact saying, you're a good spiritual teacher as long as you're presenting this, this perfection, this image of perfection. And that's not true. That's not true because that's just ego. Sorry, the dog is barking in the background. I should have put him in his crate. So I'm going to wrap all of this up because I've rambled a little bit here and I want to keep this at half an hour. And David, I do see you on. So hi, good morning. Um, we really need to understand that we have the left ego side, left brain, egocentric energy present in this physical world. And then we have the right brain creative source side. It doesn't mean the left brain is less than or evil. It serves a great purpose. We wouldn't be expanding in this environment without that. The right brain, though, the defies logic brain, that part is something that we need to allow to be more magical in our lives because it can be as magical as we allow it. I see it every day in the Taya community, people that defy logic in their lives. And if you want your life to be magical, then you've got to move into that right brain space and allow yourself to defy logic. I'm going to wrap up with that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go see what my dog is freaking out about. <laughs> I'm going to get a studio built outside of here, I guess, uh, so I can do these videos in more silence. But I do appreciate you all watching. Thank you so much.